Hey everybody, welcome back to another Dead by Daylight tier list video. Today we're doing something a little bit different, and which is something that I've been very scared to do for a long time because there are a lot of survivor perks in Dead by Daylight. Today we're going to be ranking all the survivor perks, excluding Cheryl, because there is not a tier list on Tier Maker with Cheryl, and I don't feel like getting all the images of all the perks and making my own. So we're just excluding Cheryl. Most of her perks are hot garbage, except for Soul Guard, which is kind of good, but Unbreakable is still better, in my opinion. They both function kind of the same way. But today we're going to be ranking all the survivor perks, except for those three. Uh, up to Zarina, so we have all her perks, as well as all the other survivors' teachable perks, as well as the pool of perks that you that start with. Uh, in the game so there are a total of however many perks are here to rank and I am just gonna get into it S is gonna be meta perks A is perks that are pretty good no downsides but just don't fit into at least many people's meta setups B is gonna be perks that are pretty good do have utility but sometimes don't get as much time to shine C tier perks are perks that can sometimes work, but are mostly misses, and then D is perks that do not help you that much or hinder you in some way. Tell you what, we're going to make a tier. Alright, now I can start. So my first one up, and these are in alphabetical order, thank god. We have Ace in the Hole. I'm going to have to put Ace in the Hole in D tier. I love it though. Well, most of Ace's perks, and there are some perks in this game that are very specific at what they do. Ace on the Hole is kind of one of those, even though they nerfed the item farming stuff in Dead by Daylight. Um, this build is still pretty interesting, and uh, it is the box searching build where you use Ace's perks and Plunder's Instinct to just farm items in Dead by Daylight. I'm a big fan of that. That's how I got most of my good items on Quentin, who is my main. and. I mean, they, they do not affect the match in any way, and it's complete luck. And because they're luck, there's no really reliable re way to rank them. Re regardless, they're they are not super, they, don't, they aren't game-changing, game-breaking. They don't even do anything active. They just make it so when you search a chest, you have a chance of pulling an add-on that may be good or bad. And that's the whole perk. It does not help you in any way, but... It, in the match, it does not help you in the current match, but it does help you item farm. I like it, but based on the criteria, it goes on D tier. Okay, next we have Adrenaline. This is one of my favorite perks. I love Adrenaline. I love it so much, mainly because I'm the kind of survivor that gets chased by the killer a lot. This perk helps me a lot all the time. It has an unmatched utility. Sometimes it's situational because you have to get to the end of the game if you're winning a lot, which, I mean, a lot of people would play Dead by Daylight to win, obviously, you're going to be getting to the exits a lot, and always benefiting from Adrenaline. And what this perk does is, when the exit gates are powered, when that last generator is popped, when it hits 100, you immediately get a Sprint Burst and go up a health state. So if you are on the, if you were slugged on the ground, you go to Injured. And if you're injured, you go to healthy. I can't tell you how many times I was getting chased by the killer and I was injured and running out of pallets and biding my time only for the last gen to pop and immediately I have adrenaline and I can sprint burst to a safe area where I can use more pallets and I can last long enough for my teammates to open the exit gate and then I get a free escape. It's so fun and so reliable, oftentimes I mean, most of the times I can't play without this perk, which is why it fits into my meta build a lot, and I I can never play a survivor until I've gotten unlocked this perk on them because it is just so crutch for me. I love it to death. And then next we have Aftercare. This is the worst of the aura reading perks for survivors. There's Empathy, Bond, and Aftercare. Aftercare is the weakest of these. It is... I mean, it's helpful but it's too gimmicky it's very unreliable it only allows you to see one survivor uh and if if the um if someone is running this perk and they happen to unlock it on you uh then you get to use it but it only unlocks for one survivor granted no range but bond and empathy are infinitely better 
Uh, we'll get to those perks later, and which I think is better, but Aftercare is 100% the worst of these. Still not terrible, not a bad pick if you got nothing else, but not that good. Oh, I didn't even explain the perk. Basically what Aftercare does is um, if you're running this perk and you save a survivor, you're basically linked with that survivor and you can see each other's auras. Or I, I think it's if you unhook them or if you heal someone. It might just be unhooks, but it could be healing as well. And you're linked with that survivor. That survivor can see you and you can see that survivor until one of you get ho gets hooked, I'm pretty sure is how it works. Okay, next we have alert. What this perk does is anytime the killer breaks a pallet in a match, no range, I'm pretty sure it's on a cooldown, not a range. It used to be on a range, but they, they gave it a substantial buff. Anytime a killer breaks anything, anywhere in the trial, um, it'll show you their aura. And there might even not be a cooldown for it. There might be, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but I don't feel like looking at it. I'm pretty sure it might be, it might be a cooldown, but anytime the killer breaks a pallet, you see the aura for like a good five seconds, I believe it is. Not bad. I do agree with people when they say that it's underrated. Not that underrated though. I'll stick it in B tier for now. I might put it in C if I feel like I need to move them around a little bit, but I'm kind of happy with B tier. Um, just because, I mean, it, it definitely has utility, but it's just, it's just not that useful. Seeing the killer is great, but there are a lot better perks for that. Empathy comes to mind. Um, it has no, or it, it used to have no range, but you can see all injured survivors, and at the start of a trial, if a survivor gets injured, obviously that's where the killer is going to be because they just made them injured. Or anywhere, when a survivor comes immediately injured, you're going to know that the killer's right there, and it's very reliable. It tells you exactly how long the chase is going based on just seeing the survivor's aura. Alert is useful. Not that useful though. That's my that's my two cents on it. Any means necessary. I have a very soft spot for this perk. Uh, I've been running it recently, and I I consider it to be kind of fun. What this what this uh, perk does, and everyone freaked out when they saw it back when this perk first debuted with Yui. Um, it's the resetting pallets perk. So basically, uh, so long it's it's ready. It's not on cooldown. It has a really hefty cooldown. You can hold E or whatever your active ability button is for four seconds on a pallet that is dropped and you can reset it. Two things about this perk. Hefty cooldown, really, really hefty cooldown, and also three things. The killer will not be breaking pallets if they're smart. You'll rarely get used to this, especially in chase. Um, most of the time when you use this, you'll just be wandering around the map and just find a randomly dropped pallet that the killer didn't break for some reason. And if the killer is good, they're never going to leave good pallets dropped. Um, I'm not going to put it in D. And three, it's a four second, four second uh, animation. And it locks you in place. Sometimes it'll trip up the killer. Because putting your hands under it looks like you're about to vault it. But good killers will spot that and be like, eh. So it's fine for like faking back and forth. But most of the time you don't want to ever be in that situation where you're vaulting back and forth. You'll want to leave the loop before that even happens. So, it does have use. Sure, saved here. Everyone thought it was going to be really good in general. Resetting pallets. They handled this perk well to make it not super fucking broken. So, good on behavior. It's still not great. Okay, next we have Autodidact. And I'm going to have to go faster because we have a lot more perks to work with and than in comparison to like the killer tier list. So we're gonna cover these like kind of rapid fire a little bit. Autodidact, bad, bad perk. Sometimes it'll work, it takes forever to build up. Um, Otstarva's um, autodidact build, which I don't know if you guys have seen, I'm not assuming that you have, but Otstarva's a pretty big content creator for Dead by Daylight. Essentially you take um, Solidarity, Autodidact, and botany knowledge or something or maybe even empathy probably empathy i would take self-care uh if i was fitting that into my build it would be autodidact empathy solidarity and self-care for me um and what it does is every time you get a skill check you uh this perk will gain tokens at zero tokens it's like a 30 percent penalty toward uh skill checks 
So the first time you're healing someone, you get your first skill check, they will lose progress, which can sometimes hurt you. Uh, 30% is kind of a lot, kind of. Um, maybe even 50%. It's something like 50, 30, and then three stacks, you don't get anything from it. Two stacks, it's 20%, and then or four stacks is 20%. And then like five stacks is 80 or something percent, or maybe even 50%. Something stupid, and it it, it doesn't affect like Sloppy Butcher, Thanatophobia. Skill check bonuses don't count. And it can sometimes heal people. Most of the time, you will not be benefiting from it. I won't put it in D tier because it has uses, but not that useful. So we're going to move on. Next is Babysitter. This perk is hot garbage and useless. Most of the time, the killer will not tunnel pe This perk does not affect wh who the killer goes for when someone gets unhooked. It'll cuck you over a lot because what the killer can instead do is slug the injured person off the hook. So you gotta have borrowed time if you're running this. And even then, what you can do is slug them and then just like follow your aura so you can't escape. This perk is so bad. I don't think anyone's even really surprised. Basically what it does is when you unhook someone, the the injured person will not make scratch marks, I believe, and you will have the killer can see your aura for like five seconds or something. Basically encouraging anti-tunneling. Good killers will not tunnel most of the time. So this perk's useless. And um, the aura does not encourage the killer whatsoever. So yeah, it's bad. It doesn't do anything. And then next, we have one of my favorite perks, Balanced Landing. I cannot. I'm going to be so biased in this. Okay, I'm going to be honest with everyone. This perk is definitely A tier, but I'm putting it in S tier because I don't care. Balanced Landing is great. It's my, the best exhaustion perk, in my opinion. Frick that hard. Basically... A pre-patch balance landing would definitely be an S tier. It was stupidly good. Um, it was actually broken before they changed it with 2.1.0, I believe, was the patch where they where they changed balance landing to act the way it's supposed to. So for like a good while, that balance landing was in the game. You would just get a sprint burst when you jumped off stuff, and you have no stagger. While you're on exhaustion, you would still get staggered, whatnot. And it was it was a good perk back then. Uh, and in my opinion, it's still a good perk. A lot of people don't think so, which is ridiculous because that was only for like a a year and a half that balance signing was stupidly broken. But basically, the 2.1.0, they made it so balance signing, even on exhaustion, will give you no stagger, which is ridiculous on some maps and w way too strong. Um, specifically, Haddonfield. No stagger saves you so much time on loops. And then. I don't know how recently they changed it back to the old way and everyone thinks bounce landing is hot garbage now which is stupid because it's just the way it was before and it was still good back then i think it's still good now because the, the way it works is hills and drop downs normally hinder you as survivors not only does balance landing make it so they don't hinder you they actually benefit you and not many exhaustion perks can say that not many like, lie, the windows are already strong. You don't need a sprint burst around them. That's one of the reasons I think lie is a bit stupid. Not stupid, but, you know, it's not super strong. Uh, sprint burst is, I mean, running is already strong. You can get to loops if you know you're running. Dead hard is, it compensates for mistakes. The way it's used in the good way, which is for distance, is, is, uh, is, the, is good. But um, I still don't think it's the best exhaustion perk. Um, bounce landing is the only one that makes it, so that something that you could normally have to rule out immediately like i can't go upstairs i can't go on that hill it'll hurt me you can actually throw that into your into your chase be like oh now i can go stop at this hill get balanced landing go somewhere else run around a little bit um i think it's very good very good exhaustion perk it's my favorite exhaustion perk i don't know if it's my favorite perk but it's my favorite exhaustion perk definitely a strong perk definitely a really good perk i would understand if you don't put it in s tier but yeah, that's where I'm putting it. Better together. This is actually a pretty decent perk. Basically, when you're working on a gen, nearby survivors can see the your or, the aura of the gen to know that you're working on it. And it does something else that's also really strong. 
it's something like while you're while the survivor is hooked people can see you anywhere or something I, don't, I really don't want to look up perk descriptions because I want to go off my own memory. Anyway, it's a good perk. I think the generator ore stuff is actually really good information for your team. However, bond exists, so it's not exactly that great. I need to order these. Aftercare. Just kidding. Okay. Um, yep. It's, it's, it's strong, but there are better alternatives. Bond, empathy. Boil over. This perk is really useless. Makes it so you wiggle. You, the killer will get more... Um, It'll be more affected by your wiggling in like strafing in directions. So stupidly bad, it is ridiculous. On some sometimes it'll get you a wiggle. Never in my life have has anyone ever struggled off my back when I'm playing killer with boil over, or have I ever struggled off with boil over? It does nothing toward the wiggle bar. I think breakout is this breakout. I'm pretty sure it's breakout. I think that one does affect the wiggle bar. I might actually have to look up perk descriptions for some of these. I'm sorry. Um, I forgot where I put it. Boil over. Stupid. Dumb. Useless. All right. Next up is Bond. This is one of our aura reading perks. Very strong. I wouldn't say it's S tier because 30 meters isn't super close. A lot of times you're on like a big map. You can't benefit from it all the time, which is why I think empathy is better, and we'll see that very soon. Bond, definitely a good perk. Definitely a good perk for people starting out, definitely good for solo queue, and even for like playing on teams. This perk is very, very nice. Uh, it's definitely one of those perks that it's hard to play without once you don't play with it. The information you get from knowing where your teammates are in your vicinity, unmatched. It is so good, especially since you can see everyone just within this uh, small range, which is great. Um, I don't know how to describe its utility other than you can decide what you should be doing um, when you see what your team is doing. When you see that someone's running off to go to the save, you can stay on the gen, or if you're getting chased, you know, the people are doing a gen next to you, or if you're getting if you're getting chased by the killer or on the hook and you see that someone's close, you know you can run away because someone else will get the save, and you'll take the killer away. Very good perk. Now, I don't know where to place Borrowed Time. My gut is telling me this belongs in S tier just because it's borrowed time but it's been nerfed a little bit borrowed time is a good perk but i'm gonna put it in a tier because it's been nerfed a little bit to where you can't use it outside terror radius and also sometimes you'll be benefiting from it sometimes it's situational the killer sometimes will be camping so you'll never be benefiting from it it's definitely a very useful perk if someone's camping it can save the team and save a player if someone's getting camped by the exit gates someone can pull off with borrowed time and they'll get injured and then they can take a borrowed time hit and everyone gets out very useful in that regard a lot of times super situational it can destroy you when you're playing killer and you're on your last ditch effort you got looped all the game they did all the gens you're camping the last guy you're just trying to get your one kill and then someone runs up and they have borrowed time and they all run out and teabag you at the exit gates it happens this perk definitely has its moments where it shines it is not something that always fits in the meta unfortunately so i have to put it in a tier Botany Knowledge, definitely useful, absolutely. This is one of those more simple perks. Basically, this perk makes you heal faster. That's all it does. It's very useful in healing builds and whatnot. Definitely not a bad pick, especially if you got nothing else. Obviously, it doesn't fit in the meta all the time. Obviously, it doesn't even have that much of an impact, but it's definitely nice. It definitely doesn't do anything. It's one of those more middle-of-the-road, it can't hurt to put on perks. So, yeah. Breakout. This one is a more, um, I have a soft spot for this perk, mainly because it feels so good to use. You throw a breakout on, you get unhooked, and that hook comes down, you can see the killer. I think this is not a bad perk, like everyone says. Will you always be benefiting from it? Yeah, because it, it's always active, unlike Borrowed Time and some things, but a lot of times hook spawns will be closed, so if even if the killer is like camping you and you get pulled off and the hook breaks, they can just still take you somewhere else. It definitely is not useless but it still belongs in C tier. You kick into high gear when someone's in trouble inspiring them to become an obstacle. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. So I'm, I'm very surprised with how they handled this perk. Basically, um, what this perk does is if you have it on and someone's getting carried by the killer, if you're within six meters, 
which is like right there. Um, you'll run faster and have haste, and the server will go out 20% faster. However, extremely situational. Extremely situational. Hardly ever benefit from this. Especially if you're just by yourself. 20% is a lot of percent, but you can only ever take one hit when you're just you're by yourself running this perk. Um, baiting hits is a bit of an ad advanced technique, but perk is situational. It's interesting, situational. Running this with a Sabo squad or something would definitely be good, but situational. Okay, buckle up. This makes it so that you can see your slug teammates auras, or they can see how recover they are based on the intensity of their auras on the ground so if they've not recovered at all they'll be white and if they are like a deep red you know that they're ready to be picked up really pointless really pointless um because you can always kind of guess what uh how long they've been on the ground based on how long it's been they, since they've been slug if you're a smart survivor player you'll just know how uh, far people are recovered sometimes you'll have a useless survivor who just decides not to recover on the ground and then you run over to them and they're just not recovered at all sometimes this perk will help N almost never though almost never and it and even when it works it's pretty much like wow why am i even running this perk i can tell all that myself bad put it here bad next up is calm spirit so this perk only counters infectious fright and the doctor it's counter to Doctor is actually pretty substantial. Also, it doesn't make you disturb crows. Um, <laughs> the thing that this perk does is so irrelevant and situational. What are the chances the killer is going to be the Doctor? This is one of your four perk slots, and you're choosing to run Calm Spirit just on the slot machine chance that the killer might be Doctor. And even then, you can use lockers or just be out of range or something. Infectious Fright, you sometimes see, but it's not it's not worthy of a perk slot just to counter one perk. It's not good. What is that, camaraderie? Yeah, that's camaraderie. This perk is so stupid as well. Dude, Steve has terrible perks. Um, basically, what this does is whenever you're close to a survivor on the hook they will wiggle or their struggle time will be paused for like 16 seconds or something um basically um you will never be benefiting from this ever because if the killer is gone you won't need the additional seconds and if the killer is there they Additional seconds don't change anything if they're sitting right in their face with a chainsaw. <sighs> just additional struggle time is just time wasted. It's not going to change. Unless you have borrowed time, camaraderie is not going to help you. And even then, you can just run up with borrowed time some other time before camaraderie would activate. It's not worthy of a perk slot. Not even close. Next up is Dance With Me. This is actually a pretty good perk. Pretty good in a certain build that True Talent likes to run a lot. Which is quick and quiet, dance with me and live. Basically what it is is you vault the window and then just run somewhere. And then the killer can't find you because he didn't leave scratch marks. Live and dance with me have great synergy as well as really quick and quiet. Um, uh, not D tier. I'm going to put it in, I really want to put it not in C tier. So I'll put it in B, why not? This will be toward the bottom of B, mind you. But yeah, this perk definitely has uses and will sometimes benefit you i mean no scratch marks can be substantial especially if you're the kind of person who wants to break the chase a lot not one of them but if you are one you'll definitely love this perk i definitely can see its use it's not one of those ones that will rarely work it's on a cooldown every time you vault a window you'll be benefiting from this and it's up to you to make that synergy work but not bad okay next up is dark sense i believe that is um, I can't remember. They they did change Dark Sense. Dark Sense used to be the one that shows you killer. Oh, 
This is like every time a gen is completed, you can see the killer, right? Because they made Kindred do everything, and then Dark Sun's got a huge nerf. Yeah. Every time a gen's completed, the killer's aura is revealed to you for. Yeah, this perk's kind of good, but whatever. We're going to move on. Use Kindred. Do not use Dark Sense. Seeing the killer is not as helpful as seeing this all survivors. Ooh, we got big boy Dead Hard. Dead Hard. What a perk, huh? Everyone loves to run Dead Hard. Using this perk to tank an extra hit is so bad and stupid. The killer will always know you have it. It is so completely pointless if your killer is not the dumbest guy on the planet. However... If you run it to get distance on loops, it's actually pretty good. It's like a, a sprint burst, kind of, but you can use it whenever you want. And for that regard, it is actually pretty good. And that would be the way that I would use it if I was running it. Because using it to tank an extra hit never works. <sighs> Alright, I'm going to get crucified if I don't put it in S tier, so yeah. That hard S tier. I'm rolling my eyes at it, but yeah, it, it definitely, you see it a lot, and for good reason. Ooh, Decisive Strike. I do not know how I'm going to place this one. Decisive Strike. So basically what DS does is, when you get pulled off the hook, for 60 seconds, you are invincible. Because if the killer kills you, you can use this perk. By itself, it's not that great. Because you can just ignore that survivor and chase all the other three in the match. All four people have it. This perk's pretty good. There's counterflow to it. Sometimes it'll help you, but most of the time the killer's not going to be tunneling you. I don't eat a lot of DS's, but its presence in the map alone can frick with the killer quite a bit. So, I can't... I'll put it in A tier. Frick it. Kindred, this is a really, really good perk. Really, really good perk. Basically, when you're on the hook... Um... When you're on the hook, you, all other survivors can see your aura, each other's auras, everyone can see everyone, and if the killer is close to you on the hook, um, everyone can see that aura as well. Very handy, very good. It's like Bond, but for everywhere. And if the whole team has Kindred, everyone can see everyone for the whole match, that's pretty cool. Definitely very underrated, like to a degree that I would even... I, I mean, I, even I would say that this perk is hugely underrated because seriously, Kendra got buffed a long time ago and no one ever really noticed. This perk is really good. Okay, Deliverance. This perk makes it so that after, if you save someone in the match and it's a safe unhook, the first time you're hooked, you can Kobe with 100% chance of getting off and having the broken status effect. This can definitely change the match. The requirement to safe unhook someone is perfect for the perk i think this is a pretty good perk i'd say it's overrated because a kobe can help especially since especially on comms i mean a lot of people think that you don't it's for solo key when your teammates are terrible but if you can kobe by yourself that means all the people on the team can continue to do what they're doing and get the game over quicker and you can take care of yourself very helpful it ha it it's so helpful i'm gonna put an eight here Detective's Hunch, bad, bad, bad. People love this perk, I don't get it. It's definitely Taps Worst. What is this perk? When you complete a gen, after, for 10 seconds, you can see like nearby totems and stuff. <sighs> Run small game if you want to find totems. This perk is so bad. Even with a map, it's just like, why? What is the point? What, what are you getting from seeing all these things? It does not affect the match at all. You barely even see Hex Tomes anymore since Ruin got nerfed. Why? Bad perk. Discordance. Bad as well. Because this is basically barbecue counter. Because you get three tokens. This is what this perk does. You get three tokens and uh, each time the killer can see your aura, instead of seeing your aura, it'll consume a token and you won't be seen. There are some aura perks in this game. There's like... Um, barbecue comes to mind. Uh, I don't know if Object of Obsession works. I would assume it doesn't. Killer or a perk something. Uh, uh, I suppose it'd just be barbecue, right? It's barbecue. Only barbecue? Or is. Oh, Bitter Murmur. 
Bitter Murmur and Barbecue. And Hex Retribution. Those are like the... Uh, there might be more. I'm not saying there won't be more. But um, those are the ones that come to mind. One... Just... Uh, just get in the locker. Get in the locker. Don't run this perk. Get in the locker. It's pointless. It's so bad. It's so bad. I don't know what else to say. Really? Three tokens in a match and the killer can't see you? Even if he doesn't see you, wh what does he get from that? If you're just, like, screwing off on a gen? You can hide behind the gen. You don't need a perk. Ugh. Diversion. Or diversion. Basically, if you're within the killer's terror radius and you're crouched, it'll charge this perk. And once it's ready, you can crouch and press E. And it'll throw a rock. Distracting the killer. It'll put a little nosy notification and a bunch of scratch marks. Sometimes this perk will work. I'm not saying it's uh, B tier. Sometimes it'll work. Most of the times, people will kind of realize, oh, this person has uh, diversion. So, I mean, it's not bad. It's just one of those middle of the road perks that has uses, but ultimately not worth a slot. So, yeah. It's diversion. Empathy. S tier. So that's a good perk. This is ridiculously good. Not, sorry. Not only is this a better bond, it also tells you a lot about what the killer is doing, which bond does not do most of the time. Um, so it's, it's why, in my opinion, bond is better. If the killer is good, your teammates will always be injured, so you'll always be benefiting from seeing people with empathy, uh, especially at the start of the game. Uh, the first person that's injured, you'll know the killer's there, and if they continue to get chased, you'll know the killer's still chasing that guy, and that's great information for you because most of the time at the start of the match you don't know where the killer is or who he's chasing or what they're doing empathy tells you everything um and when they die or when they get hooked or when people get injured in the match anyway you can run to them and heal each other which is great because healing is crucial in a match especially if you don't have self-care so finding each other and healing is great empathy does that not to mention there's like no range to this thing there's a range that was implemented but it only really counts on like super big maps uh, it only counts enough to make a difference on Super Big Max. Big, big Max, big maps. Um, so if everyone's injured in a match, which sometimes will happen, I'm not. I mean, it's more common than people think. Uh, you can see everyone on the match everywhere. It's so good. Definitely better um, bond in my opinion. S tier. Fixated. When this perk came out, everyone thought it was so cool. Well, that was uh, forever ago. Um, most good sir players can kind of. Uh, guess what their scratch marks look, look like especially after playing killer um, and it's secondary ability walking 20% faster can be fun if you run like sprint burst and just hold it the whole game I've made a fun build with that and it was cool but definitely not worth the perk slot I, I really don't think it's D tier but 20% faster walking speed is not great and the added bonus of Seeing your scratch marks is almost pointless because, you know, you can you can already tell where your scratch marks are going to be if you know how scratch marks work. It's not worth a perk slot, even remotely. What is it? Flip-flop? Is that flip-flop? Yeah, flip-flop. Bad. Terrible. Um, basically, what flip-flop does is it makes it so that when you're being carried by the killer and you get dropped, your recovery will be added to your wiggle progression. However, it's halved. So if you were recovered all the way, you'll get back about like 48% of your wiggle bar, which is not a lot. Oftentimes, the killer can just get you to a hook anyway, so you'll never be benefiting from this perk. It's terrible. For the people, this perk's pretty good. I hope that no one watching this video has ever had a situation where um, they've been gen rushed by a really scummy team playing really well and they have to tunnel someone down, and then some dude comes out of nowhere and instantly heals that person with four other people, and then you immediately lose because you have to go for the person who you haven't hooked at all. I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. This perk can be pretty nasty sometimes. It has a, a kind of strict requirements for using it. There's a cooldown, and someone has to be injured, and you have to be healthy. Um... But basically, actually no, I'm pretty sure you have to heal someone fully and then it'll activate. And it also has a cooldown and you also have to be fully healed and the other person has to be fully injured. Or not fully injured, but you know, injured. 
because so this is you won't you won't always get like a, a bunch of value from it because most of the time you're you're healing someone else and you're trading it out for becoming injured yourself a lot of times it kind of feels like a trade but in some matches on one occasion some blue moon uh you'll see the true greatness of this perk when when you someone really needs like a, an escape and then you just come out of nowhere and fully heal them um it, it's pretty nasty with survivor runs so it definitely has utility head on um this perk definitely can be used i'll put it in b for now um it's definitely the weakest exhaustion perk a exhaustion perk um only because it triggers exhaustion i don't even know if it really qualifies it is the weakest because uh it's just so gimmicky too gimmicky uh stunning a killer isn't the biggest deal in the world it's fun to use and it can work sometimes especially quick and quiet there's some synergy there worth a perk slot not quite i would say hope i see a lot more people using this perk which is very interesting this is like a different adrenaline and i see people running adrenaline and hope together because they both trigger at the powering of the exit gates adrenaline gives you whispering person and a boost of health while hope makes you have haste for like four minutes which is the duration of the rest of the game so you you are faster by the time the exit gates are powered i would say at that point in the match you don't need it because you have adrenaline and you get a sprint burst into wherever you want, where there could potentially be pallets, so long as you're smart with your sprint burst. Um, so hope is kind of redundant in that regard, just because adrenaline exists. Um, even then, haste is nice. How much you're going to need it, I can't say justifies a perk slot, so I'll put it in C for now. Inner strength. When this perk came out, everyone was like, Self-care is dead. Inner strength, a new meta. And to some extent, I kind of see that. I'm definitely a self-care fan. Just because it's straightforward. It's not gimmicky. It tells, it, it does exactly what it's supposed to do. And it's very efficient and effective. Inner strength, me, it, what it does is when you cleanse a dull totem, it'll be charged. And then when you're injured, you can go into a locker and then eight seconds, you'll come out healthy. So it's essentially a different way to heal yourself. And then second wind came along and it, it kind of is Steve's version of inner strength, but inner strength is better. One, there's only five totems on the map. So it's five heals across the team. And, that, and that's assuming people just don't cleanse dull totems for blood points. So people can steal your heals, which is annoying. I, I hate that my heals are limited, which is why self-care is so nice because there are no charges. You can use it as much as you want, whenever you want, and it's very convenient in that regard. I have to go and cleanse a dull totem, and then there are four left, and then potentially other teammates will have inner strength, and they'll all get cleansed. I'm getting at a maximum, usually only two heals with dull totems. And usually you have to heal more than two times in a match, usually. If you're not just getting tunneled so i think it's it i self-care is better in my opinion just because it is unlimited and reliable i cannot rely on inner strength to give me my heal all the time i'm running around looking for totems wasting time whereas with self-care i can just start the heal immediately finish it and then go do a gen inner strength i think is more time consuming more strenuous and more annoying in terms of healing yourself so I'm going to put it in B tier. Iron Will, definitely a strong perk. I wouldn't say it's S tier, just because it doesn't fit in the meta, because most of the time, making those sounds when you're injured isn't really that helpful sometimes, but this is definitely a very strong perk. What Inner Strength does is, when you're injured, you make no sounds. And I, I don't know if when you're healthy, you make less breathing sounds, but when you're injured, you are completely mute. Sometimes it's helpful, sometimes it's not. It's kind of map-dependent, killer-dependent. And it is very, very handy. Not all, it's not my favorite perk to run, but I mean, if you go against a spirit, you're gonna, you're gonna realize how much you need Iron Will because whenever I play against spirit and I don't have this perk on, I immediately regret it because I'm at such a heavy disadvantage because I'm, I'm so loud when I'm injured. 
And that's kind of when uh, you realize the strength of inner strength, or inner uh, iron will, inner strength. Um, and you can sometimes hide around corners and whatnot, which depends on like the survivor you're playing, so you can blend in a little bit. Strong, very strong, not S tier that. Wait, no, oh, this is deja vu. I'm a fool. I'm sorry if everyone was yelling at me for deja vu. They all look the same. I'm sorry. Deja vu is like the worst perk in this game, even after it started. Kindred, we've already talked about it. A tier. So I'm talking about deja vu. Basically, what it does is when it'll show you the closest three gens in the match, and then you can like plan against the three gen. Pointless because you can gather this information by yourself if you're a good player. So it's redundant. Leader. So what leader does is whenever you are near teammates, they will do stuff faster. Basically, a worse version of prove thyself. Is it useful? Not quite because it doesn't benefit you. It benefits your team. You're not always going to be with your team sometimes because, I don't know, you have to go run across the map and get healed or you have a reverse bear trap on your head or you're getting chased, whatever. Um... So you're not uh, always benefiting from running leader. Its benefits are fine. Prove thyself is better, obviously. Uh, it's crazy to me how similar leader and prove thyself are. So I'm going to slap this guy in B tier, I guess. Throw him in B tier, why not? Good, but not great. Left behind F tier, golly. What this perk does is when the last, uh, when you're the last survivor alive, it'll show you where the hatch is within like a, the me, the range of terror radius, basically. Extremely situational, and its benefits are not that great because you can hear the hatch. You're not always going to be the last guy alive to get the hatch. Not worth a perk slot at all. Lightweight. So what this perk does is, um, your scratch marks fade three seconds faster at level three, I, I believe. And I've seen comparison videos and people say that lightweight is a lot better than people say. I'm not a fan of the stealth play style, so I don't I don't get, I would never run this perk. Uh, and its benefits are meh to me. So I'll, f I mean, it is useful. I don't imagine, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna throw it and see. <laughs> live. So live. Underrated perk, overrated in how underrated it is. I think this is one of the weaker exhaustion perks. Useful, sure. Throw it in B tier because windows are already strong, like I said, so you don't need live. Especially if you know what you're doing as survivor, this perk's kind of redundant. I would rather have balanced landing to make drop downs my friend, or have dead hard to give you second chances. <sighs> uh, it's not the weakest exhaustion perk we'll get to that one later <laughs> but um definitely not my favorite perk to run lucky break i'm pretty sure i have to look up this one i'm just gonna make sure i know what i'm talking about you've had your share of scrapes and bruises but luck's always on your side you, oh a total of several seconds uh permanently deactivated for the remainder of the trial Anytime you're injured. Bad. Who even... Bad. That is so bad. <laughs> Metal of Man. Metal of Man. The perk itself that was stupid when it came out. And now it got nerfed into oblivion. And it's been buffed a little bit. It's gimmicky, but I consider it fun to run. I mean... Yeah, no, C tier, I'm sorry. No either get in your tier. What is this? No one left behind. This one gives bonus blood points at the end of the game for altruism. I mean, it's blood points, so it has no effect on the match, so D tier. Hmm, okay. Object of obsession. Object of... How do I even rank this perk? Um... It ha it, it okay a tier. <laughs> what object of obsession does is it makes it so you can see the killer, and the killer can see you whenever the survivor looks at the killer uh, during a match. So if any time 
the survivor looks in the killer's direction, it'll light up and you'll see their aura wherever they are. Very annoying when you're playing survivor. It really depends on the survivor to be a good player and not die because running this perk puts a target on your head because as soon uh, like they can see you, so they'll just come for you and kill you because they know where you are. You got to be competent when you run this, but ranking these perks from the best, object of obsession's potential is nuts. And sometimes this perk can be extremely annoying, so yeah. Off the record, this is another one I have to look up. Sorry, Zarina. Off the record. Once you're unhooked or escape from the hook, off the record activates for several seconds. While off the record is active, your aura will not be shown to the killer and grunts of pain. Oh. So it's timed iron will? Timed iron will. Just run iron will. This is stupid. Pointless. Iron will. Run it. Where did... Where? Is it there? Off the... Oh, there you are. Okay. Yeah. Pointless. Don't run. Open-handed. This makes it so or... Aura reading perks are increased to, I think, 8 meters. It's uh, They're added 8 meters. This is very fun to run with bond. The whole team got bonded open-handed. You can see everyone. Very fun. However, super gimmicky. It does have an effect on the match, but most of the time you have to jump through hoops to make it work. Jump through hoops, but not entirely useful, I would say. Pharmacy. Oh, we're getting to Quentin's perks. I love Quentin. My favorite survivor. Pharmacy. Basically, what this does is the first chest you search, when you have this perk on, it'll always be a green medkit. <sighs> kind of a poor man's self-care. I'm going to throw it in. Whoa, head on. Where do you come from? Wait, where was head on? Here. Um, I guess C tier works. It's useful, but there are better perks to run. Plunder's Instinct. So this perk makes it so you can see chest auras from up to, I believe it's 32 meters. It would be 32 meters. Maybe 40. I'm going to check right now. Sorry. Plunder's Instinct. Yep, 32 meters. And grants a considerably better chance of finding an item of higher rarity. Um, so it's box searching build, Plunder's Instinct, uh, it, anything that relates to luck or box searching is going to go in D tier because it doesn't affect the match whatsoever. Poised. Right. After generator is completed, you leave no scratch marks for 10 seconds. I mean, no, bad, bad. Sorry, I'm having to go a little bit quicker because I have to model through a bunch of garbage right now. Uh, speaking of the dev, we have Premonition up next. This is a terrible version of Spine Chill. Terrible. I'm going to put in C tier, though, just because it, it, it's just a, it, it's a terrible version of Spine Chill, but it, it's kind of in the realm of Spine Chill. Spine Chill is going to come up later. Very strong perk. Premonition is a, a weaker version of that, in my opinion. Prove thyself. So what this perk does is whenever you're working with your team, you do things, a stackable 15% repair speed buff uh, for a maximum of 45 seconds. So whenever you're working with your team, you do stuff 15% faster and you get more blood points. So that's kind of cool. I didn't know, I actually didn't know that it, uh, it gave you bonus blood points. That's interesting. So yeah, this is a very strong perk. A uh, better version of leader, obviously, it's going in A tier just because its capabilities are much higher. You do not make it. What am I talking about? I'm sorry. Quick and quiet. So um, you can do fast vaults, and they won't make a noise notification or any noise whatsoever. Um, for a cooldown of like 60 seconds. Tw wow, 20 seconds at level three. Uh, okay then. So. Um, yeah, this this has great synergy with head-on. You can vault in the locker and then come out and stun the killer, especially inner strength as well. Quick and quiet is definitely good. I mean, a lot of Meg's perks are great. Uh, and worth getting the teachables for. Quick and quiet ha depends on, you know, other perks to be to be fun. But you can, like, do cool stuff like running around a, a loop that has, like, a, a locker and then just jump in the locker. 
completely lose the killer. That's always fun. So it's going in B tier. I mean, even as a standalone perk, it has it has uses. Red herring. This one is a doozy. After repairing a generator for at least three seconds, it will be highlighted to you with a yellow aura. The generator stays highlighted until it's fully repaired, or you repair a new generator or enter a locker. Entering a locker will trigger a loud noise indicator for the killer at the highlighted generator's location can trigger it once every 60 seconds. So you can make noise notifications on a gen for three seconds. Why not just keep doing the generator? D tier. Just seems like a hindrance, right? I don't know. <laughs> Then we have resilience. Basically, does he do stuff? <sighs> Motor mouth. This basically lets you do stuff faster at a 9% increase at level 3. On repairing, healing, sabotaging, on hucking, vaulting, cleansing, gate opening, and chest searching. So, this has great synergy with Gnome either, which we covered, or anytime you're injured. 9% is a lot of percent. Uh, very useful sometimes. I'll say it's B tier because it you know relies on you being injured, which you don't ever really want to be for extended periods of time. What you can do is just 99 yourself with self care and then just like do gens for a little bit. And when the killer comes, you just tap it and then you're back to full health. So, yeah, 9% is a lot of percent. Very strong perk. Saboteur. It's gimmicky. I gotta put it in D tier. It is nothing for the game. Uh, allows you to see hook auras upon rework, of course, and then you can just stab it without a toolbox. And it goes on cooldown. And it is not very impactful in the game, so yeah. D tier. However, a lot of these in D tier are, are gimmicky and can be used in fun builds and find some neat synergies with them, of course. Second Wind is a crappier version of Inner Strength. Basically what this does is uh, you have to heal someone fully and then the next time you are unhooked you will be broken for a total of after, after a duration of 30 seconds it heals you. The amount of hoops you have to jump in for this perk are ridiculous i'm gonna put it in c tier though because it does heal you but you know just run self-care speaking of which self-care unlocks the ability to heal yourself without a medkit at 50 percent of the normal healing speed this is without a doubt the strongest perk in dead by daylight i know everyone hates oh don't run self-care because the meta is changing <sighs> i will never see a day when self-care is not the strongest perk in dead by daylight because of its utility alone the sheer convenience of being able to heal yourself whenever and wherever at any time is unmatched maybe adrenaline's better maybe some wild exhaustion perk is better self-care beats all of them in convenience most of these re require like cooldowns or situations where they're strong self-care works all the time wherever it can, it's completely malleable to any situation. If you're last alive, if your team's doing gens and you don't want to pressure them to come heal you, you can do it yourself. Uh, if you're in a chase, you can sometimes heal yourself all the way by the time the chase is over and you can take an extra hit. And most of the time, you can only heal yourself a set amount of times. Those being med kit charges or you know your teammates being alive or something like that. Self-care is unlimited and I love it for that. This perk is very strong. Anyone who can test it is probably just tired of it being the best perk and wants something else to come along, which I'm sorry is not going to happen. Self-care is the strongest perk. Okay, Slippery Me. This gives you three extra escape attempts on the hook. Um, and the odds of freeing yourself are increased to 25%. Wow. However, we can't really judge luck, and it has no greater ramification than that the match so i'm gonna have to put slippery mate in d tier i don't think anyone is surprised by that and then small game which is the totem finding perk makes it so that whenever you're near a a totem or a killer traps 
than a 45 degree cone um it'll give you noise notification this perk is so annoying having it go off all the time most of the time i can find totems enough just by guessing the spawns i mean that's something that you develop as you play the game you'll just memorize totem spawns and whatnot all that kind of crap map spawns that's just stuff that you develop over time so i suppose there's a kind of like a, a skill gate to this and maybe if you're a lower rank you'll want to consider running this perk by all means do it that it it is sometimes useful but i i would at my current skill level i would never in my wildest dreams consider even touching this perk right, right now and then soul survivor which is the one of the worst perks in the body no either exists so i guess it wouldn't be but um so as wait no this perk is terrible this perk does nothing d tier i'm sorry um as your teammates die you cannot be aura read by the killer and this depends on the killer having an aura perk or you having an aura rating perk so like it has synergy with object of obsession i guess but it's already gated by the terror radius right this perk is bad this perk's not good don't ever run this perk solidarity i mentioned this when i was talking about the auto didact build basically whenever you're healing someone and you're injured as well that healing will go back to you at a at like half the conversion rate useful but not worth a perk slot this i mean you have to jump there's a bunch of little things that need to be in order for this perk to work properly i mean it's it's relatively pointless spine chill our next s tier perk after self-care what spine chill does is uh, you get notified when the killer is looking in your direction at a range of 36 meters. But while Spine Chill is active, skill trick trigger odds are increased by 10% and success zones reduced by 10%, which I didn't know. But what's actually really interesting about this perk is while Spine Chill is active, your repair, healing, sabotage, unhooking, vaulting, cleansing, exegate opening, and chest searching speeds are increased by 5%. You vault windows 5% faster. That is what have officially made this perk S tier. It was good on its own by notifying you whenever the killer is looking at you. The fact that it it helps the chase by a factor of 5% is unmatched. This perk is so good. I love it. Oh boy. It's time for our worst exhaustion perk. All the Sprint Burst fans in the chat, get your pitchforks ready because I'm about to flame this perk. So whenever you run with Sprint Burst on, you get a Sprint Burst, and it goes on cooldown for 40 seconds. Every time you run in a game, Sprint Burst will go off. This perk is so annoying and hurts you so much that you have to walk everywhere in order to have it ready whenever you want. Sprint Burst is so, I mean, it's not even that great because if the killer follows you in a straight line you only gain about like five seconds of run time which isn't drastic especially if the killer has created a dead zone sprint burst is not that extravagant and you can't choose when to use it sometimes you can by 90 90 the bar but that's always finicky and if you get on a gen you've immediately sacrificed all that 99 percent progress i hate this perk so much c tier tell you what b tier but at the bottom of it stake out I love this perk. This is a very fun perk to use. So this was the official Ruin counter back when Ruin was, you know, how it used to be. Basically, for each 15 seconds you are standing within the killer's terror radius and not in chase, you get up to four tokens every 15 seconds. And then uh, Stakeout will burn tokens as you get skill checks, and if you get a good skill check, it will be considered great. So it'll consume a token and do what a normal, do what a normal great skill check will do. This perk's a lot of fun to use. It's I, I'll I'm just gonna. It's not that useful, of course, but it's fun, and it was especially great when Ruin is back in the game because it countered Ruin pretty hard. 
not pretty hard, but you know, hard enough. And even me, who you know, skill checks are not a big deal. I like this perk to a degree. I don't know; it's fun to use. And then next we have Streetwise. This makes items burn faster, hot gar or er, burn slower, hot garbage. Counter to overwhelming presence, but items are not that big of a deal. Technician, hot garbage. Skill checks are not that hard, especially once you get later. I, I get that it's gated by skill level. If you're lower ranks, you might consider running this perk. I mean, if you, if you need help with skill checks, obviously, but it's like after 50 hours of gameplay, the skill checks are nothing. Seriously, not a big deal. <laughs> Tenacity. This makes you crawl on the ground faster, and you can recover and crawl at the same time, which is pretty interesting. Um, so, this relies on the killer slugging you, which is more common nowadays because killers are having to use more desperate means of slowing down the game because Ruin is not in the game anymore, which is fine. I appreciate the that kind, that aspect of this, so... Slugging is getting a bit more more love nowadays, so maybe you'll get some use of this perk, but most of the time Most of the time you're just gonna be getting picked up and put on the hook immediately and I mean this doesn't even allow you to pick yourself up So moving faster is not gonna you know stop the bleed out timer and eventually you're just gonna bleed out so I'm I'm just gonna put a detail here <laughs> This is not happening um, This makes great skill check success zones bigger by a factor of 30% when you're injured. Again, skill checks are nothing. This spray is so bad. Moving on, we have Unbreakable. This allows you to pick yourself up off the ground and you recover 35% faster. Um, this perk is getting a lot of attention right now. Again, because slugging is getting a bit more love nowadays. Um, so this has slowly made its way into the meta, which is very interesting because this perk was not good like a year ago. So, I'm not quite sure where to place this. It's situational as balls because you have to be slugged. Again, slugging will get more attention, and it also requires you to be not one of the first people picked up because you need to, you know, work up to recovering. I mean, sure, it has very strong uses, but its situational factors will bump it down to B tier. Up the ante. This is another one of the luck perks. I'm just going to throw it in D tier, but this makes it so you get a 3% luck bonus to all remaining survivors as they're alive. Uh, sometimes it'll help you Kobe. 3% of luck is, is kind of substantial, but again, there's no way to factor luck in a you know, normal match because sometimes you're just unlucky. So yeah, D tier. Then we have Urban Evasion, which makes it so your crouch speed is the same as walking speed. This perk is honestly not that bad. I mean, I don't play this stealth playstyle, but I did it once upon a time, and I was in love with this perk. A lot of times you don't have, um, there's not high walls, so you can just stand up and hide from the killer, so you just crouch along, and then the killer won't see you. It definitely gets use a lot. Just because I'm not a fan of it, I'm not going to deny its use. It is definitely useful. Vigil. Oh, no. Oh, no. Vigil. This makes it so you recover from status effects faster. <laughs> um, when you're close to the person running this perk. 20% um, faster. <laughs> Sometimes in fun, quirky builds, it, it'll be fun. Not most of the time. And then wake up. Quentin, why are your perks so bad? Um, wake up makes it so when the exit gates are powered, you can see them. With a, there's a range on it now. With a range of 128 meters. And while I'm opening it, you reveal your aura to other survivors. And you open it 15% faster. I did not know about the aura thing. Honestly, that's... Ooh, no. Here, um, it's, it requires the exit gates to be powered, which won't always happen. It requires you to be one of the ones to open it, which doesn't always happen, especially since there's only two exit gates. And 15% is not extravagant, so there's almost no point in running this perk. We'll make it very strong healing perk. This makes it so 
when you rescue a survivor from the hook, you heal twice as fast. I believe that is. Yeah, twice as fast. Very strong, especially, I mean, most of the time when you're healing survivors, it's going to be off the hook. So what you can do is just pull them off and then heal them nice and quick with Will Make It. Very strong perk. I would recommend it. We're going to live forever. Technically the strongest perk, but only because all this does is give you blood points. It gives you it's the only survivor perk that gives you double blood points in all categories, which makes it unmatched in some regards, but also it has no effect on the match whatsoever. So it's gonna go in D tier based on the criteria, but honestly, this is probably the strongest perk in Dead by Daylight because of the blood points, which is not something that can be graded in the in the game, obviously. And then we have windows of opportunity. Throw it in uh C just because I feel I feel bad. I do not need to run this perk. If you're newer to the game and you don't know where stuff spawns, sure, run this perk. It's honestly not that bad. And some not, in some scenarios, I could see myself benefiting from it. Most of the time, I can guess pallet and window spawns pretty much flawlessly. And this perk just seems redundant if I ever run it. So it's, I, it's, it's fun. It's convenient. It's useful sometimes. But if you get... You know better at the game you'll realize that this perk is kind of pointless to some extent of course and that does it for the tier list these are all the survivor perks ranked one two three four five so we have six s tier perks in dead by daylight and my top 10 perks are wait i need to rank these this is my build by the way these four perks that is my standard build in dead by daylight this is these are my four favorite perks I love them to death. I usually run... I mean, sometimes I throw empathy up there. I don't run dead hard. I hate dead hard, but yeah. It's... It's... It's, it's um, value is obviously unmatched, but... So the top 10 perks in Dead by Daylight are... Borrowed Time. And number 10. Number 9. DS. Number 8. Bond. Number 7. Iron Will. Number 6. Dead Hard. Top five, number five, empathy, number four, spine shield, number three, balance landing, number two, adrenaline, and number one, self care. And that is my ranking. If you have any uh, disagreements, be sure to leave them in the comments and be sure to talk about it with you guys. I love having discussions about these perks, seeing what other people think about them, because a lot of people have different builds in the body. LA. And if you're fond of some particular perks that I might have ranked low or not as high as you would have liked, tell me about it and we'll talk about it. That'd be a lot of fun for me. So, yeah. Bye, guys.